Hello and welcome back to Peckpong. Today we're going to be talking about the much requested video about movements. What we're going to be going over specifically in this video is how to move after you've served or maybe push short and your opponent gives you the opportunity to attack. We're going to be going over each different scenario and how to move to each one properly. Balls that are deep to your middle, balls that are high to your middle, really wide to your forehand, medium long wide to your forehand, deep to your backhand, uh, and many more different ones. And each one has a different kind of style of moving and we're going to be covering each one in depth, uh, step by step, how to do those different types of movements. We'll also be covering how to practice them, different methods of practicing the moving techniques so that you can step by step kind of start to include them in your game. At the time of making this video, I'm actually training full time in Japan, so a little bit of a different backdrop, but hopefully the information is just as good. I actually had my coach in Germany, he was the one who kind of laid out this whole footwork framework for me as he wanted to make my movements cleaner, faster, and more efficient, and I really liked the way he described it to me and I'm excited to share with you the information that he gave me as I found it very insightful. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Oh, it is so good the way he moves forward, pushing off off that left foot and lunging out towards the net, Wang Chu Chi. Okay, so movement number one is going to be the preparation. Preparation footwork after you serve or after you've pushed short is very very important if you don't master this it's very hard to uh, move forward and and be able to get the next ones as it's the framework or the foundation for all of good footwork so after you serve you want to make sure you move into neutral position as fast as possible you want to make sure that you don't make a lazy one foot takeaway if you're doing a foreign pendulum serve you need to be using both feet uh, and jump to a good position with some space from the table if you're on the receiving side of the serve, there's two kinds of movements you can do to move back out from the table properly. And the first one is a one larger jump back. So you use both feet and you move back from the table uh, with one larger jump. The second kind of movement, which is also okay, is taking two smaller jumps with both feet back from the table. Actually, the two smaller jumps is more efficient because it lets you make micro adjustments depending on where you think the ball will go. But both are okay, both are used by top players, and it's kind of up to you to decide which one you like more. This is actually the movement that my coach in Germany really wanted me to perfect, was moving back from the table after I received the serve short, as I was one, a little bit sluggish to get back, and two, I didn't get back far enough. It's much easier to move into the table than it is to move away. So if we've made these movements correctly, we have now have space, and we are in good position with good time, ready to handle any ball that your opponent gives you. Okay, so situation number one. It could be the hardest one, as it's the most physically demanding on the body, and it is the situation when your opponent pushes deep to your middle. If you haven't gotten the moving correctly and you didn't give yourself space away from the table, this is the hardest one to deal with, as it's hard to move out of the way of the ball, and you'll most likely be contacting the ball behind your body, and you won't be able to like move into the ball or hit it very strong. So in this movement, you'll be moving a little bit away from the table and to the left uh, for a right-handed player. You wanna make sure you're moving around the ball and your right foot moves first, then your left. Your right foot moves a little bit back and your left foot moves actually a little bit in. And this will create a little bit of space for you to take a full backswing and make an aggressive stroke on the ball. The right foot initiates the movement and it's not like I go right, left. I, I use both feet simultaneously, but I'm initiating the, the movement with the right foot. After you make these movements, it's really important to get back into position as fast as possible. And what determines the right position actually depends on where you place the ball. So to kind of briefly go over it, it's if you're hitting the ball wide to their forehand as a right-handed player, you wanna cover a little bit more to the right side of the table as the angle will determine where they can place the ball. If you're hitting to the right side of the table, their backhand, you want to cover a little bit more to your left side of the table as, the, yeah, again, the angle will be determining where they can actually place the ball. So it's not actually a one position is a perfect position. It really depends on where you place the ball. Okay, so situation number two is going to be to your middle, medium long, and low. So your opponent was able to make a decent push that's nice and low and really tight to the end of the table. And 
you have to wait for the ball to come off the end of the table before you can make an aggressive stroke. Unless you want to try breaking your racket or ripping your hand open. None of them. It is now a nine-sided racket. And in this video, we're going to be covering how to move properly to the middle if you're going to take a forehand. There are some players out there who like to cover the middle with their backhand, but that's uh, not the topic of this video. This video is more if you want to cover the middle with your forehand. So for this movement, it's again going to be right foot first and then left moving. And you want to make sure that you're moving into the table this time. So after you've made the shot, it's really important to get back from the table as fast as possible because you're into the table, you've made a top spin stroke, most likely your opponent is going to block or even counter loop. And if you're not back away from the table very quickly, you're going to be not able to make another aggressive stroke. This is something I've also been working a lot with my coach in Germany, is that I, I didn't move fast enough away from the table. And if you look at the top players, they're moving really, really fast away from the table uh, for this ball specifically. So this next one is going to be again to your middle, except it's medium long high. So it's kind of sitting over the table. And if it was to bounce again, it would maybe hit the edge or it would kind of come off the end of the table. Since the ball is high over the table, you're able to make an aggressive swing over the table. But first, you need to make sure you move into the table properly to uh, make that shot. I've worked with a lot of students who have trouble with this ball because the movement into the table is quite difficult. But if you're able to master it, you're able to make a winning shot on the opponent. So this movement is a little bit different than the other ones. You're actually making two movements that are kind of combined to one fluid movement. And I'll explain. You want to move right left again, one small jump with both feet, just like the other ones, except this time, and this is where the magic happens, that as soon as that right foot lands, you want to be pushing off with that right foot aggressively, and you want to take one large step with that left foot, kind of on the side of the table, which lets you make a really aggressive stroke over the table because you're moving deep into the table. It's also important to notice when top players are taking their backswing. So they don't move and then wait to start taking their backswing. They actually start taking their backswing quite early in the movement so that they can simultaneously move and make an aggressive stroke on the ball. This movement is actually very physically demanding and it will take a lot of practice in order to kind of master it. But yeah, once you do, you'll be able to uh, win a lot of points. So the next movement we're going to be covering is low and wide to the forehand corner. So now we're moving away from the middle and we're moving to the wide forehand corner. And for this one, again, it was low and medium long, so you're not able to make an aggressive swing over the table. You have to wait till the ball kind of comes off the edge before you can make a stroke on the ball. So for this one, we're going to be moving to the right side of the table for a right-handed player. And we're also going to kind of be moving in towards the table. It's not going to be as aggressive as if we were swinging over the table, but we're still moving into the table. And so for this one, you want to initiate the movement with your left foot first, and you will want to take a very large step with your right foot. And this right foot lets you get nice and close to the table and gives you the ability to be in swinging distance of the ball. And that left foot, after you've taken that right step, is actually going to drag along the ground as you need to keep your, you know, you need to A, move to the ball, and B, you need to also keep your legs kind of close so that next shot you can move away from the table properly. Okay, so this one is the forehand wide and high over the table. And for this shot, we can actually use two different movements. So the first method is similar to the last one. You'll be initiating with the left foot first, and you'll be taking a deep step in with the right, and you're dragging that left foot along for the ride. And the only difference is that maybe you step a little bit closer to the table so that you can swing over the table. So this second movement is a little bit of an interesting one, as it has certain advantages that we'll go over. But it simulates a ball that we talked about earlier uh, coming to your middle. And so for this one, you're actually going to be pushing off with the right foot first, taking a deep step in with your left foot, except this time your left foot is going to be moving in towards the right side of the table because we want to move to the right. And, and then you let the right foot kind of drag along for the ride. And the advantages of this one are that it lets you keep your body open to the table, letting you be deceptive to where you're gonna go to, whether you wanna go wide to the forehand or deep to the backhand, it's hard to see where you're gonna go because your body stays open. 
All right, so the next movement we'll be covering is the deep, wide, fast push to your wide forehand. This one is a, a shot that gives a lot of people trouble. So for this footwork, you're actually gonna be moving very similar to the last one. You're gonna start with the left, push off with the left foot, take a deep step with the right foot close to the table, and then you're going to drag that left foot along for the ride. And the reason why we move close to the table, this is what pro players do that amateurs don't, is they move close to the table, take the ball early, and it lets them cut the angle off and also stay in position for the next ball. What a lot of amateurs do is they move away from the table and create space for themselves to make the stroke, but that leaves a block to the backhand corner uh, open. And from there, the, the amateur players, they retreat from the table and it's just kind of like a, a hard way to win a point then. So I would like to add that there is another form of movement you can use. It's a lot more difficult to perform, but it's also more effective. So instead of pushing off with the left foot first, you're actually going to be shifting your weight to your right side, and you're going to be jumping with that right foot while taking your backswing, and you're going to be making contact with the ball while you're in the air. Like I said, it's a lot more difficult to perform this stroke, but it's also more effective. If you're enjoying this video and maybe learning something, uh, please consider liking the video and also maybe subscribing to my channel. It, uh, it actually helps a lot. Okay, so now for a little bit of an easier one. This is going to be the normal wide push to your forehand. So this is neither deep nor fast. It's not really medium long. It's just kind of to your forehand. It's kind of sitting up uh, and it's, uh, you know, you can make a really strong stroke on the ball. And if you're a beginning player, this is a ball that you really want to start with if you want to start moving properly as it's just one movement and it lets you kind of uh, get used to moving. So for this one, we're going to be initiating with the left foot first again and then the right foot a small jump, take your backswing, and hopefully you can win the point. The next one we have is a little bit of an interesting one, and it's when you're a little bit out of position, uh, a little farther away from the table, and the opponent gives you a high ball over the table, and so now there's a greater distance you have to cover, but you it's still very possible to make a strong attack over the table. And this movement lets you move a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left. Uh, it's a very versatile movement. So the first step you're gonna take is with the right foot in towards the table, and you're actually gonna be starting your backswing at this time as well. The next step is where you get to decide which direction you wanna go. That left foot is either gonna be moving deep to the left side of the table or to the right side of the table, depending on where you wanna to move to. And then that right foot is gonna be dragging along for the ride as you hit that delicious winner, and your opponent is wondering how in the world were you able to move so quickly into the table and uh, make a winner on them. So the next one we're going to be covering is the wide push to the backhand. And there are two ways to move to this ball. And the first one is the one step movement. You're going to be taking one large step for right handed player with your left foot. And this lets you get closer to the ball and then you can make a nice stroke. So for the second movement, we'll be pushing off with the right foot first uh, and we'll be moving both feet into position and then you can make that aggressive backhand stroke. So for this one, it really depends on your preference. A lot of good players use that one step movement and there's also a lot of players who move both feet into position uh, for that shot. Okay, so let's go into how you can practice these movements and build them into your game. And the first method we're gonna be talking about is shadow practice. This is something I've done in Germany and something they do in Japan and China. And it's really important that when you do this, you wanna make sure that you're doing it exactly like you would in a game. If you're not doing it exactly like you would in a game, or you're treating it as if it's real, you're basically just doing fancy cardio and you're not really learning any skills. The second method of practicing is you can have a practice partner and you can be simulating these situations. So for example, you serve and you already specify that you want to practice deep to your middle and your opponent will just push deep to your middle and you can work on that movement. Or you can kind of say, I want one deep to my middle or uh, medium long to my forehand so you can practice both of those and it also keeps you a little bit more honest if you're uncomfortable with the moving I would start with one first and then start adding different ones into the mix as you become more comfortable another method is to use multi ball and one really common one that I really like is the multi ball feeder gives you one short ball it can be to your forehand or short anywhere and you push it back to them nice and short and as you're moving back they can then push that same exact ball 
to your desired location, whether that be deep to your middle or medium high, wide to your forehand, you can uh, simulate that with that drill. It's a really good one. The next method is you can use a robot and I would do a very similar movement with the robot is I would play one first short to the forehand, you push that ball, and then I would program the robot to give you your desired ball so you can practice moving in and out properly and quickly. If you don't have a fancy robot, it's also no problem. You can just set it to do your specific location, uh, let's say uh, medium long wide to the forehand, and you'll increase the wait time between each ball, and you'll just get into your ready position and wait for the ball to be spit out before you move. Make sure you don't cheat as it'll completely defeat the purpose of uh, doing the drill. And you'll just do your desired movement to that shot, hit the shot, get back into your ready position, and then wait again for the robot to split the next ball out. All right, so that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite movement, maybe one that you wanna learn. Um, I'm always interested to hear your thoughts on the matter, and I always like to read those. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep playing.